Tesla Autonomous Day? What was that about? Hi, I'm Joy. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time watching my videos, I document my Tesla Model 3 owner experience to help new and future owners learn more about this car. If you find the information I share helpful, please consider subscribing. Exactly a week ago, last Monday, Tesla held its first ever autonomous day for investors and analysts. And a subscriber, Lauren, suggested that I do this video. So thank you for that suggestion. I was watching the Autonomous Day live stream at work, so I have to admit that I did not follow it 100% of the time because I was working <laughs> at the same time as well. And also, I am not a technologist, and although my background was in engineering and I still work in the innovation and technology or emerging technology field, I am not a super technical person anymore. However, because I have been exposed to innovation and emerging technologies, I was able to still grasp some of the ideas that Tesla, Elon, and his team had mentioned on this Autonomous Day event. So I thought I'd share with you my takeaways and some of the highlights that I grabbed out of this presentation. So if there's any one of you who is an engineer or you're working on AI, you're working on machine learning, and uh, you're really entrenched in technologies and innovation, please chime in down below as well so we can all learn from each other. So I'm just going to go down this list that I have um, of some of the highlights that I grabbed. So number one, obviously the hardware advancement. Uh, so Tesla has been designing its own full self-driving autopilot chip and it is being shipped in all the Tesla cars right now. So this car has actually what's it called AP2 or 2.5 but I did purchase the full FSD upgrade when the price was cheaper. So when this new one, the hardware version three, is available for current Tesla owners to upgrade to, I will be able to get that chip. And basically what that does compared to the current version that's in my car is it's going to capture a lot more images per frame. So that means that it will have more accurate image processing to identify objects and lane markings and for the car to react a lot faster in autopilot and in self-drive mode than this car right now. And another important thing that Elon and the team had mentioned is that the hardware has redundancy fail safe. So what that means is, for example, they designed this chip to have dual power input. So if one fails, it will switch over to the other one and keep the system running. And the beauty of that is, as Elon stated, is that if any one component fails, in the computer system. Your car will not stop. It will continue to run. And that is for the safety of drivers. And I appreciate that so much that Tesla has us, the driver safety in mind when they are designing the car, even down to the chip level. Next, Neural network. So this is a big term that a lot of people don't understand. And frankly, a lot of the things that they talked about in this presentation, they're just over my head. But the takeaway for me in terms of the AI, uh, actually the neural network in particular, is that right now all the Tesla cars on the road, they are acting as the eyes on the road for the entire neural network that Tesla is building. Whenever I'm driving on the road or, or whenever you are driving on the, on the road, 
in your Tesla, all the cameras, they are sensing and taking imaging and processing all these images to recognize markings and objects and you know lanes to continue better the neural network. So think of the neural network as an infant baby. It knows absolutely nothing to start. And what you need to do as your child grows up, as your baby grows up, is that you continue to teach, right? Your, your child from infant to toddler, right? You would give them maybe flashcards or picture cards and you teach them words and alphabets and, and colors and whatnot. And that's exactly what a neural network is. For Tesla to grow the neural network and for this neural network to become more robust and mature and to work better, all the cars out on the road right now, we are all helping to train the system. And so all the cameras are just learning and learning and learning and learning and learning. And at Tesla, all the images are being processed over there and uh, they, they feed it through machine learning and visual deep uh, learning and uh, AI to train the system. So that's what the neural network is. So the more Tesla cars out there, the more robust and better this neural network will be. All right, next, LiDAR. Yes, uh, Elon basically made a strong statement talking about how if you are still relying on LiDAR, you're gonna be dead in the water, which is true because LiDAR is expensive. And um, back in the days in 2005, I believe when DARPA came up with a grand challenge with the autonomous vehicle driving the desert, I had the opportunity and the privilege to visit Carnegie Mellon University and saw the vehicle that won the DARPA grand challenge with self-driving navigation. And there's so many equipment, radar, LIDAR sensors up on the roof and around the car. But those equipment are very expensive, like I mentioned. And what they're doing is they're really just taking in data points and they're sensing distance. But now as technology has matured and in my line of work, what I've been seeing is that the trend is people are going back to just the basic simple camera and they're able to extract a lot of measurements just out of this camera. So they're using cameras as a simple sensor because it can detect slight changes in the atmosphere and also for object image processing because that is a much better way to recognize an object is to continue to feed images of an object from all sites, right? When you're looking at an object from all the different sites and you feed all that perspectives into the system, that's how you make up the more accurate description of the object. So that's what Tesla is aiming to do is to rely more on computer vision, which I fully support. And I think it's a very smart move on Tesla's part. Next, human driving behavior for lane change and merge. Oh yes. This actually came, I think, uh, from the audience. Somebody asked, you know, what about driving in LA traffic? This person was obviously from LA, so he understands my pain. Uh, what about lane changing in just jam traffic? And whenever I drive in traffic and I have to take it off autopilot, I have to just constantly just see, making sure that I have just enough space to cut in there, right? Otherwise people won't let you through. You're gonna miss your exit. People honk at you when your car keeps slowing down in, in autopilot. So Elon said, yeah, we need something more than Mad Max mode. We need LA traffic mode. So hallelujah on that one, Elon. Hopefully that will come true. And this is something I have been saying, whether online or in-person discussion or in some of the YouTube discussions, comment in the comment sections in my previous videos, is that I wish that Tesla, the system will be able to observe how human beings actually change lanes and actually merge lanes so that the car will behave more humanly, I guess, <laughs> in, in terms of lane change. So it'll be very helpful when we drive in LA traffic when full self-driving 
is coming online because that will be a big factor for adoption. Next, Tesla network adding to fleet for ride sharing. Oh yeah, so this is now we're moving from the AI and the software discussion to the potential applications that Tesla can use for the coming FSD chip. So they are going to have what's called robo taxis. Elon explained that Model 3 lease, so for those that don't know yet, Model 3 is open for leasing now. So you can actually lease a Model 3, but the caveat is at the end of that lease, you do not get to keep your Model 3. You actually have to return your car back to Tesla. And the reason for that is Tesla wants to use these used vehicles and put them into self-driving robo-taxi. So it's like uh, ride-sharing, like Waymo, I guess, or Uber with self-driving or Lyft with self-driving so that Tesla can actually make some revenue that way, which is smart because they're growing into adjacent business areas to bringing more revenue using these used fleet. And also Tesla will give Tesla car owners the ability to opt in to what's called the Tesla network. So this way we or I can put my car onto the Tesla network. So when I'm sleeping or when I'm at work for seven, eight hours a day, my car just sitting there, right? Somebody can potentially hail my car. My car can just drive out and this car, this person can ride in my car and I'll get to make some money off of ride sharing while I'm sitting in the office doing my daytime job making money also. And Elon said that the purpose for this is to help people offset some of the car payments. That's a great idea and I really dig it because again, he's having the customer's best interest in mind because he understands that Tesla isn't exactly completely affordable right now, but hopefully for people who are interested in making some profit off of this vehicle, they can do so. And uh, here's an interesting thing. I did a poll, actually I did two polls, one on Twitter. So you're not following my Twitter yet. It's uh, just Tesla Joy. So look me up there. I ran a Twitter poll, it only lasted for 24 hours. And then I also asked you guys here on YouTube under my community tab, if you would put your car on the Tesla network for ride sharing. And um, here are the results. Surprisingly, both the Twitter and the, the YouTube results are quite similar, even though there's been a few days, you know, gap in between. So the Twitter results, number one, there are three options. Number one is yes, why not make some extra money? 35% um, of the people that responded out of 121 people on Twitter said that they would do it. 40% said, no way, this is my baby. No one's touching it but me. And then 25% says, I'm still deciding. So it's, it's kind of like a third, a third, and a third breakdown on Twitter. Here on YouTube, um, out of 182 of you who participated, 32% of you said, yes, why not make some extra money? 42% said, no way, this is my baby. And 25% said, I'm still deciding. So right now, it seems like um, people are not really willing to put this on the Tesla network yet, but there's about a third of you who are just like, yes, sign me up. And uh, somebody, I forgot who, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, made a comment in that poll saying that, well, my, if my car is still new, I probably won't put it on there. But once this car gets a little bit older, I might consider it to make some money back. And I think, yeah, that's probably a good reason why people are not willing to put their cars on the Tesla network to become robo taxi right now. So uh, if you didn't participate in these polls, let me know in the comments down below what you think. Would you be willing to put your car on the Tesla network to make money or you are just like, nobody's touching this. <laughs> so let me know. And then uh, another interesting tidbit that I captured is that Elon mentioned that Tesla is spending their 
entire expenditure, I might be wrong, or most of their expenditure on AI and autonomous driving. So this is actually in line in an article that actually tweeted, I think it was a month ago now, that came out of the Boston consulting firm. So the Boston consulting firm, BCG, they are a well-respected consulting firm and thought leadership group. And they came out with this article, and I'll put a link down there, talking about the top 100 or top 50, the most innovative companies of 2019. And Tesla made it to number nine. So number one was Alphabet Google, and then number two, I think it was either Google or Amazon, and then Microsoft is on the list. But in the top 10 spot, Tesla is the only automotive manufacturer out there. And the next automaker that was on the list, I believe it was BMW, and they were number 25. So that just shows you the big gap in the auto manufacturing industry of using AI and still trying to catch up. This BCG most innovative company list, they measure based on their AI usage research and deployment right now. So it makes sense that Tesla is spending most of their money right now, R&D money on AI and autonomous driving. And then somebody asked if the Tesla car on the robo-taxi network, if it gets into an accident, who would be at fault? And Elon pretty determinedly said, it'll probably be Tesla's fault. That is quite a statement to make if you really think about it because he is willing to bet that Tesla full self-driving technology will reduce accidents made or initiated by the vehicle versus accidents caused by humans. So let that sink in. Basically, these are the highlight points that I grasped from the Autonomous Day event. And the conclusion that I have is this car is so future proofed that it's going to take years for other car manufacturers to catch up to Tesla. And by that time, Tesla is going to be on a whole other level. Now, I know other companies are also working on self-driving technology like Ford. I know that they have a huge AI research center up in Silicon Valley. Same thing with Toyota. They do have a Toyota Global Research Institute that they're just devoted to nothing but AI. But Tesla really is the only viable massively deployed semi self-driving cars out on the market right now. And next year, when the FSD is ready for the whole Tesla fleet, when this car gets upgraded, when Tesla turns on that switch with a software update, this is going to change the whole ball game in driving, in traffic management. So if you're still sitting on the fence about purchasing a Tesla, yes, I am biased, but hopefully you can understand why I am biased toward Tesla. I love that people are getting EVs. I love that there are more EVs out there, but Tesla really is in its own league. So this is my take on the Tesla Autonomous Day, and I am really excited for the future of Tesla for the future of self-driving, for the future of much safer traffic flow on the road for all of us. Again, if you enjoy what I have to share, please give this video a like, make your comments down below, share your thoughts with us. I like to engage with you. And don't forget to subscribe down there and share this video with others. Until next time, have a blessed week, everyone.